Let's jump right here in the middle. Sorry, Annalise got started a little late. Okay, right, did you get it, Ben? Why? Minus two x plus four. That's why. Hang on. Have I missed something? Yes, you missed this. You missed lots of things. Okay, I want you to write down on the table uh, pretty much the points that are close to or fit on here. So for this graph, I would use negative one, zero, one, and two, three is off the chart. Wait, couldn't you just do negative one? Oh, how many should you have? Four points? As many as you can. So negative one, zero, one, two, and two. So you do I'm at 13. I have no 14. Hmm? Wait, what are we trying to do? What are we trying to do? Okay, we're just copying down the points that we're going to use to graph this. Zero y zero four one zero two negative four oh, we're doing it like that. three and thirty four. Okay, so there's a table of values. Fourteen. Now you notice when I put my points on there and I look like hey that almost looks linear. This is where you have to use the calculator to help you get the shape of what the graph should be. Okay, because you want to try to make this sort of shape going on right there. What's that, Rachel? What's that? Hey, that is just plain mean. Don't be mean, Kaden. Yeah, Kaden. What? What, dear? What? You heard what you said. I didn't hear what you said. You weren't loud enough. I didn't hear it either. <laughs> okay, so you're going to come down. You're going to. Try to draw it like your graph. Okay. So you see where you have to use the calculator to help you get the picture of what it looks like. You can't just rely on the points. Once we get this, next thing we need to find are where are the zeros? Okay, how many will there be? Two. Two. Now one of them you can get from your table. The zero's at, let's see, x1 is, there is one of them at one. One zero, that would be one of your zeros. So your zeros are your x-intercepts. Those are where y equals zero. Don't do zero, four. That's a y-intercept. Okay. So x2. Good. You remember how to do that. Hey, everyone get to 2.31 or 2.308? No. 
here at 2, negative 4. Does it go lower than that, though? Uh, yeah. 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 If you hit your trace, you're at least going to negative 4.37. So you can calculate your minimum by going to the calculate, and you want to calculate the minimum of that range, that integral. Mm -hmm. I, you got 4.53. So this is the same sort of process. You have a left bound, you have a right bound. Um, 1.8, negative 4.5. Why do we have more than one? jump Okay. So, good question, Emily. Well, our next one will happen. And what we're going to have is we're going to have. Oh, is it like a. There's called relative minimum and there's overall minimum. So, it's like an absolute Hey, domain. All real numbers. And range. Domain is all real numbers. Every polynomial, the domain is all real numbers. How do we write that in interval notation? It's negative infinity to negative infinity. Parentheses negative infinity. Comma. 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 Okay. So your domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. So every polynomial, guys. Sorry, see two guys just sit over there. Range is not all real numbers because you have a minimum here. So if you have a minimum there or a maximum, they can't be everything. So you're going to go off of the y values of your minimum. So your range would be a bracket negative 4.5. Does it ever stop going up? Nope. No, there is no maximum. To infinity with a parenthesis. Okay. The interval notation or the range, finding the answer? The, never mind. I do understand. 
All right, those are the parts. <laughs> now we're into another one. Okay, we're going to have some other variations going on with this. All right, let's graph number two. And those are all the parts that we need. A table, the zeros, minimums and maximums, and domains and ranges. Are all the problems Some variation, yeah. Nope, I see what I did. Which one are we doing? I'm missing one. Which one are we doing? Number two. Oh, number two. I did five. Yeah, there we go. Is that what you have? Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Maybe because I thought we were moving on to the next topic. Okay. 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 It was just number two on page 334. 334. Yeah, I know. How does it look Second graph takes you to your table. I wasn't done writing it down. Now, if you want to get help you get a better graph, you can find some of these zeros and your minimums or maximums. Before you graph it, you can plot those points, and that will help tell you where is it crossing the x-axis, where is the maximum supposed to occur. Because mm -hmm. you're right, it looks really linear, and we know the graph should not be linear. Okay. None of our zeros should come from our table. Just put there's none.